Welcome to the AI Ireland podcast. In today's show, we're speaking about some of the applications of AI within the agriculture industry. In the show today, I'm joined by Brian Mullen, Principal Data Scientist and Analytics Manager at Microsoft Ireland, and Edmund Harty, Professor at UCD, and up until recently, CEO of Dairymaster. Our guests will be speaking about how technology is being used as an enabler within agriculture to provide improved customer service and sustainability. Welcome to the show, both of you. Thanks very Thanks, much, Mark. Mark. So if I start off, Brian, we have an ambitious national project between academia and industry being conducted with the challenging topic of climate change called Train AI that commenced in December 2020. Tell myself and the listeners more about it. Sure, Mark. Um, so look, what, what we're trying to achieve here is we're, we're looking to build a, uh, a digital carbon emissions platform. What we're planning to do on top of that is pull in data from a myriad of different sensors, satellite imagery, etc and build out AI solutions on top of that to enable more effective carbon removal strategies and services. So in essence, that, that at a high level pitch is what the project's about. It has been a two year project in the making. So while we announced in December 2020 the launch of it, um, you know, we had actually been working with Science Foundation Ireland in the background for the previous couple of years looking at you know what types of projects we would want to go after in this space and we kept coming back to climate change we kept coming back to carbon and that's when you know through science foundation ireland we started partnering closely with maynooth university in particular you know professor tim mccarthy from the department of computer science and then senior lecturer dr rowan feely from the department of geography and that's when we really got together and started mapping out what we think we could achieve by building out such a platform Brian, research in this area today is focused on individual land use types or activities relating to a specific sector. Can you tell me how Terrain AI will look to go further and the additional benefits that result? Yeah, so um, with, with Terrain AI, you're absolutely right. Look, there's a lot of research out there where people have been looking at different types of terrain. I think we have a fantastic opportunity here in Ireland that we have such a variety of terrains within a short distance of each other. Um, so a couple of things that we're looking to do here is we, you know, we are measuring across a myriad of different sort of soil types. So we're going from croplands to forestry to peatlands, obviously, which are super important, and uh, all the way through to urban. So, you know, w- what we've actually done, Mark, is our Maynooth University uh, have set up a partnership with Chagas, about 21 different research sites across the, the country, where we will have state-of-the-art equipment on those sites, looking, you know, uh, at measuring, you know, the carbon sequestration for that particular type of environment. So w- what's really unique about it is the myriad of different IoT devices that we're using on the project. Um, secondly, the variety of the sites that we're, you know, we're researching on and then bringing all that data back into one central platform uh, so that then we can um, start building out really rich AI models that can really help us better understand, uh, you know, what are the best ways to sequester carbon into the soil. So when you think about it, Terrain AI will capture a lot of data from land types in Ireland. What is the potential to do more with that data and provide insights? Yeah, absolutely. You know, Mark, there's a real opportunity here for Ireland to lead here and, and uh, you know, achieve global scale. You know, the models that we're looking to develop here can be applied, you know, to other countries as well. Um, you know, we've already got a lot of interest from around the globe in the project, a lot of interest within the EU. So, you know, ultimately what we would look to do here is, is build and train these models in Ireland, but these models absolutely, absolutely can be, you know, leveraged and used, you know, across the globe. So we are definitely thinking global scale. The other thing is, you know, we are le- leveraging leading edge uh, multimodal sensor technologies and IoT devices, again, bringing a myriad of data together from those devices is going to be hugely interesting and hugely valuable for building really, really insightful AI and machine learning models. You know, the other thing is obviously the the amount of data that we're going to be pulling in here is significant. We're talking petabytes of data just, you know, from the island of Ireland that really help to hone and to train those models. So, you know, ultimately what we're trying to do, Mark, is we're trying to raise the bar on how carbon can be measured. You know, there's a lot of different measurements out there today, and we're really just trying to raise that bar to give it a a much more accurate return on the investment in understanding what's going on with carbon in your soil. It's really exciting. Petabytes of data, there's so much to go at in in multimodal variety of different ways as well. One thing I was thinking about just before we got on air is farm beats. Tell us a little bit more about that. 
Yeah, so Farm Beach is just one of these projects that it's a project that's been going on in Microsoft for three or four years. So it started before we were even thinking about Train AI, but it's just an example of a project that really works well with what we're trying to achieve in Train AI. So look, what, what Farm Beach is about is our goal is to enable data-driven farming. It's, it's that simple. We believe that the data coupled with the you know, farmer's knowledge and intuition of their farm can really help increase farm productivity. So Farm Beach is a very broad platform that we're building out in Azure within Microsoft, but the work that we are doing within Carbon absolutely fits in with, with FarmBeats. FarmBeats today is already, for example, pulling in you know data from different types of sensors and satellites that we know that we can probably leverage in Train AI. The other thing is one thing that I definitely think we'll be able to leverage that is in FarmBeats is FarmBeats have developed a TV white space long range sensor, which basically means that farms that are in remote areas, you'll be able to transmit the data back from that farm without having to manually go out onto the farm and maybe collect the data manually with a USB stick or something like that. So, you know, we really see there being a synergy between what we're trying to achieve with Train AI and what's already out there with FarmBeats. I really like that example because you don't have to go and build it yourself and reinvent the wheel. It's actually allowing you to, to, to stand on the shoulders of giants with that. Well, I think, I think it's actually a two-way thing, Mark, which I think is really exciting is, yes, there's definitely things within FarmBeats that, you know, that the project can leverage. But there's also things that the projects are going to bring that are net new uh, the farm beats doesn't have today and so potentially they can actually add to the quality of what is already in farm beats so it's very much a partnership of mutual interest you know brian thanks for that uh, edmund uh, welcome to the show uh, firstly I'd, I'd like to welcome you again so you're an engineer with a focus on business and innovation and you're the ceo of dairy master and also the largest shareholder in the business and you built the company to one of the leading dairy innovation and technology companies in the world you're also an adjunct uh, full full professor in university college dublin as well as many other things and you're very involved in linking business technology and innovation Tell us about the journey to utilizing technology as an enabler within the agriculture industry. And you had a really good example where you used a hotel analogy. It'd be great if you could share that with us too. Yeah, Mark. So I suppose a, bi a big part of my career I've spent in using technology to apply it uh, within agriculture to make a difference that, let's say, that a farmer or a particular customer would like. And I suppose, first of all, if you think about a farm, you know, to people that maybe don't know a lot about farming, I explain it like this. It's like it's like a hotel for cows. And uh, so a lot of times people will look back and they'll say, geez, what's he on about there? But really, if you think about it, it's a resource, it's a farm, it's producing food, and uh, it, it has a finite number of spaces or rooms or amount of land. And if you like, the cows are living within that producing a particular food. So if you were an owner of a hotel, what is it that you, you'd want in actually operating that hotel? Well, you'd probably want the highest occupancy, you know, all year round. And you probably want the best paying customers and you'd want a reputation for the best service and you'd want the tools that would make your life easy. And a farm is exactly the same as that. So animals are essentially the food producers, uh, be it whether we're looking at dairy or beef or whatever. And if you're the farmer, you want the best out of those animals. You want to care for them. They're like your staff within the business. So areas like health and fertility and wellness and all these things are actually very important from an animal point of view. And oftentimes you'll see that farming, it's a 24-7 it's a job. So then what are the tools that can actually help you to make that job easier. So a big focus on labor, automation, and those things. That's all very, very important in the world of farming. Edmund, I mean, that's a fantastic example, and you really bring it to life. Thank you for sharing it. Edmund, you've been on many governmental, scientific, and industrial advisory panels. What considerations need to be taken into account when using a technology such as AI within agriculture? I suppose, look, you know, AI has applications everywhere, uh, and really it's very much a lot of the similar types of issues. Um, across the board and um, I suppose the important thing the important thing with any data in general is that it generates information that's of value and that you can actually do something with it so it's about say taking action on the data or on the insight or whatever it is you generate using AI so I'll give you a simple example of, of a thing like that so one of the products that I was involved in developing and very much led the development on it was a product called the Moo Monitor it was a wearable device for animals and it really monitored the cow's health and their fertility. And again, imagine that you were giving this talk and there was, let's say, 300 people in the room or a thousand people in the room or whatever. And really you want to know, well, how are they all feeling? Uh, are they all okay? Are they not? 
what's the situation? It's very much the same when you manage a herd of cows, be it whether that's 50 cows or 500 cows or many thousands of cows. Um, so technology steps in there and you can actually monitor the animals, determine when is the right time to breed the animal. And that's important because you can have a whole load of fertility issues as you do with people uh, or just even when to breed the cow. And that's important because that starts the milk production process. And then if you talk about health and wellness, um, that's another uh, another area that's that's important also. So using AI, using algorithms, using different techniques, it's about generating uh, some insight that allows you to do something better. So one of those uh, governmental organizations I was involved in, let's say, was a whole uh, one around digitalization of manufacturing. And it really doesn't matter what type of process or what type of job you look at, at you know, in manufacturing, you want to do exactly the same things. So you want to make it as efficient as possible. You want to get information uh, as early as possible. And you'll have heard of a lot of conversations around industry 4.0 and fourth industrial revolution and so on. And sometimes you'll hear about agriculture 4.0, which is a kind of a parallel to that. Um, but it's it's about what is it that you can do to make things better. And I often would have described how you innovate uh, and how you connect the dots that aren't already connected is very important. And I often describe innovations, it's a bit like baking a cake. And you know what, you can generate, you know, or bake a very ordinary type of cake and you know what, it'll be fine and that's about it. But how do you get the ingredients, how do you get the skills to put something really special together? And if you think about, you know, the the flavorings, the ingredients, the colorings, the nice things that you can add, they're like new technologies. And AI just happens to be one of those new technologies that you can add to that mix. And then ultimately what you want to do is generate a better product, something that your customers will buy, will adopt, and you know will be a success commercially as well. And most importantly, you're only adding in that seasoning to add flavor to make say, that bread nicer, for example. So you're not just adding it in for the sake as I say to you, imagine it was buns we were making, right? And we go out in the street and we say, you know what, would you like some of these very nice, uh, uh, you know, these these very nice uh, buns, let's say. Good chances are, you know, nice day, geez, people will buy them. If you go out there and if I said to you, do you know what, would you like to buy some colouring or would you like to buy some icing? Well, you know what, I'm in the wrong place to be selling those. It's, it's a different market uh, and so on. So it's important to understand what ingredients you have available to you and then that you have the skill within the organization and that takes time to build that skill uh, to put that together and uh, that's really that's really uh, you know what it's all about in my view. Edmund, uh, Brian, final question for, for today's podcast. The innovative research project at Train AI is very promising and the work you're doing day to day is a great reminder of what can be achieved by leveraging technology. Where do you see the future of agriculture? I suppose, Brian, I'll be asking you the same question too after Edmund. Yeah, I see technology uh, is, is already having a huge difference and will continue to have a huge uh, difference in farming. Um, the amount of connectivity that's actually used in farming already, the amount of uh, smartphone adoption, all the different things is, is quite high. But to get into the details of that, I think you can start uh, looking at applications whereby, uh, you know, you'll be using satellites and imagery and stuff like that. So from quite a far, big distance away, all the way down to a lot of work that's been done, let's say, at the DNA level and at those types of things and looking at, you know, the effects that... Uh, the things that we can measure from that, so the whole area of um, genomics, uh, the areas around, say, um, uh, health, uh, all those things. So you've all the way from, from, as I say, from looking from space down on what's happening on the earth to actually what's happening within the individual molecules. And there's innovation happening right across that area in agriculture. And it's, it, look, it's, uh, it's very exciting. Edwin, thank you for that. Uh, Brian? Yeah, Mark, I would agree with what I've been saying there. Um, a couple of things that are sort of top of mind for me. Like one of the things we're trying to get out of train AI as well is, you know, on these test sites, we're using some very, very expensive equipment to measure some key aspects of the project. But we're also using some incredibly cheap sensors as well that are new to the market to understand you know, the difference in accuracy and the difference in the quality of data that you can collect. You know, I think what's going to be key going forward is that cheap IoT devices for farmers to be able to measure 
measure a lot of things that are happening on their farm are going to be key. So I think we're really going to have to get the cost down off those. But I do agree with Ed with regards to what farmers can have is they can have their own you know devices on the farm. They can leverage satellite data and it'll be really about us bringing all of that data together into useful algorithms that farmers find of benefit to run their farms. So for me, I see a lot more data being generated from farming, uh, a lot more IoT devices, and then a, a lot of rich insights from that data. Um, and I think that's why, for example, things like rural broadband and mobile phone networks and everything are so important to farming going forward, because a lot of the data is going to be captured real time, leveraging you know, the broadband network or the, the mobile phone network. You know. You've been listening to the AI Ireland podcast, and today's show, we've been speaking about some of the applications of AI within the agricultural industry. In the show today, we've been joined by Brian Mullen, Principal Data Scientist and Analytics Manager at Microsoft Ireland, and Edmund Harty, Professor at UCD, and up until recently, CEO of Dairymaster. Thank you both for your time today. Thank you, Mark. Thanks very much, Mark.